What is up? What is going on? Welcome back to the COVID-19 headquarters, the war room, if you will. I am your host, Coach Patterson. Today, we're going to be talking about the uh, oil, cotton, cattle, and railroad unit. Uh, more specifically, we're just going to touch on oil today, and then we'll hit cotton, cattle, and railroad in the next video. Um, but uh, this is going to be our final unit of the year. Congratulations, you're almost done. You've just got a little bit longer to go. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's healthy. Hope everybody's staying on top of their schoolwork. Everything is going swimmingly. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into this uh, computer and let's see what's going on. So like I said, we're talking about the oil, cotton, cattle, and railroad units. This is going to be the period from 1860 to 1900 in Texas. Um, and so let's get into the oil. Uh, so here's a quote. Without risk, there is no reward. It is important for people to take risk. Is it important for people to take risk? I want you to think about that for a minute. Uh, without risk, there is no reward. Is it important for people to take risks? Now, the reason we get into that is because without uh, people taking a risk, we probably would not have discovered oil when we did. Um, and so let's talk about the age of oil. And the first thing we need to do is to kind of talk about one barrel of oil. You may hear in the news, you know, price of uh, oil is $56 a barrel. Okay, so what does that really add up to? So you can get 19 gallons of gasoline, nine gallons of diesel, seven gallons of other products, four gallons of jet fuel, and two gallons of heating oil in one barrel of oil. So uh, that's quite a bit. Uh, that's quite a bit of uh, resources coming out of the ground. So here's some got to know. So this is the things that you, if you can know these in this unit, um, you're going to do just fine. So got to know. First one is spindle top. Uh, spindle top is actually a place. It's not like a, you know, a little child's toy that spins around. Uh, spindle top. This is the 1901. Uh, oil strike in Beaumont, which is the first gusher of oil, which means it's just kind of spewing out of the ground without control. Um, and it's the first oil that is discovered in Texas, and that's going to turn off this huge, uh, or spin off this uh, huge oil boom in Texas. Texas Railroad Commission, uh, this is a state agency created to oversee and regulate railroads and the oil industry in Texas. Um, so it's it's kind of hitting both, uh, so, so this is going to be a big organization uh, when we talk about oil and railroads, obviously. Uh, the next one is Boomtown. Uh, these are going to be towns that are developed wherever oil was struck, um, so they're going to get very crowded because everybody's trying to get in there and make the money. Um, you're going to see a lot of industry pop up too, though, um, so it's going to be good for the economy and good for, for a lot of people because these, these boom towns are going to be showing up and uh, bringing business into towns and because but there's people they got to have grocery stores and things like that um, so it's gonna oil industry is gonna create a lot of jobs um, in boom towns next one is petroleum so we call it oil we call it gas uh, the real word is petroleum um, this is the naturally occurring liquid fossil fuel commonly called oil um, like I said we call it gasoline oil uh, 5W30, whatever it is, right? But the actual scientific name is petroleum. Um, so the next one is Howard Hughes Sr. Uh, this is the businessman who helped invent the two cone rotary drill bit, uh, which allowed further exploration and drilling in Texas. So um, this is going to be a huge uh, advancement in the oil industry and help everything kind of take off in Texas. Next one is refineries. Uh, it's one of your vocab words. Uh, this is going to be the plant where crude oil is transformed and refined into more usable products such as gasoline, jet fuel, diesel, um, things like that. So without a refinery, um, we couldn't just put what comes out of the ground into your car and expect it to run. It's not going to run. It's not going to do a good, right? Uh, you couldn't even put it in your engine and, and expect that to um, you know, lubricate your engine so that it lasts longer. So engine oil, everything like that has to be refined um, from what comes out of the ground, it goes into the refinery and then they make it into whatever that is with a bunch of science that I have no idea about. Um, but I just know that you can't, 
you can't just expect to put that stuff in in your car and make it go um, next one is a wildcatter uh, so this is somebody that drills wells in the hope of finding oil in the territory that not known to be oil in, oil in. Um, so you're basically just going to go around drilling holes drilling wells trying to find oil without you know without any cause right nobody else has found oil but you're hoping to strike it rich and be the first one that does and so you just go around and you know start drilling and hopefully you find something which most of the time they they didn't so what is oil oil or petroleum is a viscous black liquid used to f used as a fuel source it is created by the remains of organic matter dead plants and animals under pressure over thousands and thousands of years um, so when you talk about oil you got to talk about renewable and non-renewable resources okay oil is not a renewable resource you can't make more in a lab to this point right it takes thousands and thousands of years with the tremendous pressure under the under the earth um, so when an animal died a thousand thousand years ago and then you got you know soil and rock and stuff like that that piled on top of it and eventually it's going to make this is the pressure is going to decompose all this stuff and it's going to make oil um, and then you can then you know drill a hole into the ground and take that deposit out okay so it's basically like a pool sitting under you know thousands of yards and feet of rock uh, and you got to get into that pool and then you can suck all that out but then that well is going to run dry eventually and so then you got to move on to the next one and drill that and then pull all that out and so it's a it's an interesting process that, the, that goes into it but it's not something you can just you know kind of make in a lab you know tomorrow at this point now could it be in the future yeah maybe um, but nobody's figured out how to do it yet so think about it what do we use oil for right think in your head right now uh, three ways that we use oil every day obviously you know you've got some some pretty obvious ones but what are some of those not obvious ones let's let's think about that think about all the things that that oil goes into you got them in your head ready to see it so things that oil are used for basically almost everything in your life okay paint brushes socket covers extension cords tape measures oil filters tires uh, cones plastic bags tin foil um, Teflon pots and pans, so like you get nonstick pans, um, those have oil products in it, toys, pacifiers, car seats, glasses, inhalers, band aids, lamps, lawn chairs, garden hoses, shoes, um, tents, umbrellas, hair dryers, jewelry, makeup, beauty, fishing lures, sports equipment, yarn, cameras, tape, uh, tape measures, printer ink, CDs, okay? The, the, the things that oil are used for is is endless it's there's so many uses for these fossil fuels that if you took it out of our life it would be um, pretty pretty interesting to see what would happen um, but thankfully at this point we have enough oil to last us and they keep finding more and more and more so um, at this point we're good with that but that is it's it's pretty crazy to think about how much stuff oil is used for today so here's just a little political cartoon, uh, life without fossil fuels, um, in life circumstances, in light of the circumstances, this is the best we could do. So we talked about what we're being used for, you know, makeup and things like that. Um, so this hairdresser is basically saying, um, we don't have any fossil fuels, so I can't really uh, cut your hair, I can't use any of those products that uh, I need to cut your hair and do any of that. Um, so basically I can just put this brown paper bag over your head um, so fossil fuel effect products like lipstick makeup nail polish and lotion are all used to uh, are all fossil fuel products so here's another one uh, by my calculations if I flap my arms 200 times per second I'll be there in hundred and thirty seven hours so he's trying to go from Toledo, Oklahoma to Washington, D.C. Um, you can see that's probably not going to go really well. Um, so this is just kind of talking about well, what if we didn't have fossil fuels? How will we get from place to place? Uh, you'd have to flap 
137 hours is uh, quite a bit of time. Go ahead and try to flap your uh, your arms 200 times per second. You did it, didn't you? I know you did. Um, you can't do it, right? 200 times per second, so you'd be like one Mississippi, you'd have to flap 200 times. You could maybe get two or three, right? It's, it's impossible. So it all started a long, long, long time ago. Uh, Spanish explorer Luis de Moscoso found oil in Texas in 1543. Uh, so they got stranded ashore uh, and his his men were seeing these these black things floating on the surface of the water um, and they didn't really know what it was but they went out to investigate it got some uh, and realized that this stuff can be taken out of the water uh, and you can basically patch your leaky boat like flex fuel uh, or flex tape or flex whatever flex seal uh, is the is the deal so flex seal um, and back in 1543 uh, the Spanish explorers are going to use this to, to patch their boat. So flex seal in 1500s um, is, is, is going to be just basic oil. So uh, long, long time ago, uh, Beaumont is going to be you know the first one. The spindle top is kind of outside of Beaumont. Um, this is just an infographic of kind of everything that that goes into oil. You can see the population boom of Beaumont there in the in the bar chart, uh, the blue. So in 1900, before the oil goes, there's less than 15,000 people. By 1930, um, there's, they're pushing 60,000, which is, you know, in that time, quite a bit. Um, so then you get to the average revenue and oil production. Uh, so 1906, you get $100. 1919, $1,000. 1929, uh, 5,900. So it's a... Uh, it's going to be a huge, huge growth, growth there in Beaumont and in the oil industry. All right, so how do we get it out of the ground and into something that we actually need? So the oil company locates uh, the petroleum source or potential source of oil. Um, then they go ahead and put this drill into the ground and drill it. Um, then they put this big long pipes into it. Uh, pipe leads in the hole deeper and deeper. They use mud and water to cool the drill bit and then the oil uh, raises through that hole in the surface and then they can take it out and put it in barrels. So here's the, just a map of the oil fields uh, in the early Texas. So you've got uh, spindle top out here in Beaumont in 1901 uh, out here and then you can kind of see how many popped up um, in this area uh, just in within like 20 years. So you got 1921, here's 1945 going to be one, uh, 36. What's crazy is um, this kind of area out here in deep west Texas is going to be um, not tapped and that's where they're actually pulling a lot of oil out uh, today. So the rise of the industry you can see kind of um, where the cattle fell, where the cotton fell, where the lumber fell and then the oil. The oil is still going strong in Texas today. Um, so that industry just keeps on going and going and going. So how does the boom change the economy? Um, the discovery of oil had the uh, economy um, that you know created these boom towns and created a lot of industry for uh, the um, the towns that this oil was found in. So that's going to change the economy drastically. Uh, the benefits of having oil. Here's just a picture of you know kind of a before and after. Uh, so this lady doesn't have wallpaper, struggling to keep her house clean, doesn't really have a stove or anything like that. And then you get oil introduced into her life, and then she's uh, she's in this you know nice wallpapered uh, house with the clean floor. Uh, she's got a nice stove there that she can cook on. <coughs> Bring your dog to work, they said. <coughs> hey. So she's got a nice stove that she can cook. <coughs> She's got a nice stove that she can cook on. Everything is is good. Uh, so here's just a picture of uh, what a derrick would look like. Kind of the uh, the introduction of, of what an oil field would look like. Uh, so this big thing right here, this pyramid looking thing, is a uh, derrick. Uh, this is what they're actually using to drill for oil and everything like that. 
Uh, we don't need that one. And that's it. That's going to do it for the oral edition of this uh, presentation. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you uh, are looking for the Cattle, Cotton, and Railroad, that'll be in the next video that we're going to get to. Uh, we'll wrap up that unit there. Stay on top of your schoolwork. Do everything you're supposed to. And we'll see you in the next one.